by popular demand. It's Jim's Vacation Video 2010 Edition. Vacation Destination, Alaska. Part 1. What do you want to bet that the very first pictures I took on my vacation were of birds? You're right, they were. Here's some pictures of some black-billed magpies that I took when I flew into Anchorage. And there's a black-capped chickadee, too. And look, a common sandpiper, which incidentally is not very common, and it's a good find for this part of Alaska. But most members of my internet audience could probably care less about birds. Sad but true. So I'll just glance over the birds and get right to my other photos. After flying into Anchorage, the first thing that I did was hook up with my graduate school friend. Uh, his name is John, and uh, we headed to a spot near Independence Mine, which is about two hours north of Anchorage, near a place called Hatcher Pass. Uh, now John knew someone, uh, or knows someone, uh, with a gold mining claim, uh, an active claim, and so we thought we might go exploring uh, around that, the site of the gold mine. But uh, look here, it was really high in elevation, and the, uh, the, the fog was moving around uh, the mountains, and we decided to just kind of stick with the paths and not go exploring for fear of getting lost. Well, after our trip to the mine, uh, we went to a river. And the name of the river, I had to look this up, was the Matanuska River. I tell you, look at that river. It is probably one of the widest rivers I've ever seen. It was really cool, too, because there were some uh, bank swallows that were nesting right along uh, the cliff sides. Um, but, oh wait, those are birds. Let's move on from those. So, on the next day, after a fun night at the local bar that John had taken me to, and Shayla to, uh, it was time for me to leave by train uh, on the Alaska Railroad. And we, uh, or I did, I headed to Denali National Park. Here's the train ride, lots of footage. It took about six hours to get to Denali by train. The train seemed to be moving a little bit slower than it could have been moving, uh, so I think they slowed it down just to help people admire the scenery, and it was very beautiful scenery. After hour number four, though, I got kind of tired. I have a lot of train footage, uh, because six hours on the train, there's not that much to do. Uh, but don't get the wrong idea, I really enjoyed it. In fact, early in the trip, the train passed through the town of Wasilla, and that is Sarah Palin's hometown. And, um, you know, about the same time uh, that we were passing through Wasilla, I noticed that the woman just a few rows ahead of me, she actually had hair that was similar to Sarah Palin's, and she had glasses that were similar to Sarah Palin's. Could it be her? Wow! Yes, it was! Oh my gosh, look at that! Well, finally I arrived at the train station in Denali National Park, uh, and then I checked into my hotel, which is right nearby. Uh, I walked into my room and I took this picture because it felt especially homey. Well, it's 6 a.m. on the next day, which is early by my standards, but a full two hours after sunrise up there in Denali. I boarded a bus at my hotel and I traveled into the National Park. Well, as you can see, it was a fairly clear day, and we soon got to a vantage point where we could see Mount McKinley. In fact, only about 20% of park visitors ever see that mountain, because it's usually obs obscured by clouds. Mount McKinley is uh, the, the white mountain that's right in the center of this picture. It's 20,000 feet tall, the highest mountain in North America. In fact, it's taller than anything in Africa, Europe, Australia, Antarctica. Um, but I hate to say it, it looks rather unimpressive here. I didn't take my biggest camera lens, so all the shots of animals you're going to see today uh, will be a lot like this. Those are caribou, I tell you. And hey, there's common raven. Hmm, bird, never mind. Oh look, there's a sheep. It's called a doll's sheep. What, you can't see it? Jeez, do you need glasses? It's right there. Yeah, here's the same spot zoomed in. Mount McKinley. We're closer now, and it's still fairly clear weather.
Okay, back on the bus now. There are brown bears to see. People in the lower 48 call these grizzly bears, but most Alaskan biologists call them brown bears. And I'd love to be an Alaskan biologist, so I'm going to go with that. What, you still can't see the bears? Again? I knew you had trouble with the caribou, but the bears, really? Uh, okay, well, there's one, and a second one. I've got another couple shots later to show you, and I promise they'll be a little bit easier to see next time. Hey, there's another bear. No, wait, it's an arctic ground squirrel. I still got footage of it, though. Um, you know, how often do you see one of those? We stopped at a place called Toklat River. Here's the river. Uh, and the bus uh, parked, and they had hot chocolate. Uh, and then we posed with caribou antlers. Now, I really like this particular shot because it's, it's fun and dynamic. Someone was taking a picture of me, taking a picture of that same person, taking a picture of a bunch of people holding caribou antlers on the banks of the Tolklat River in Denali National Park on a pleasant day in July 2010. Hmm. Well, I've overanalyzed that one. So look at the following shots with a minimum of narration. Another brown bear. Mount McKinley. And that wraps up part one. Thanks for watching. Coming up in part two, more Denali footage, including an attack by wolves. Plus, travel back to Anchorage to see authentic Alaskan underwear. You'll never believe it. Then, travel to Seward, a lively fishing village and wildlife haven on the southern Alaskan coast. Part two is coming soon.